Never dreamed it would go this long and far. I don't want to come back and say, look, all you have to do is just buy here and you make $16,000. You know, well, I didn't know I'd make $16,000 because that's what trend following, like the hokey pokey, is all about. Well, one of the day is Thursday, October 10, 2024, and this is the week in charts. I just want to thank all you guys and girls for attending. I'm sorry I make it so hard to find the show. But if you go to DaveLander.com slash webinar, you can register there. Register for one, and as I add new shows, you'll still be able to access the show with the same link. And you should get a reminder now before we accept today. I just realized I set up the show too late. Anyway, so what are we going to talk about? Well, current market conditions, obviously, I'll have a lot to say about that, as I normally do. Your questions on trading, your favorite stock and crypto picks, and the methodology in action. Start thinking about your stuff. By the way, start thinking about your stock picks now. So when we get to the end, we don't get a flood um, after I'm in the process of shutting down the show. So what are we talk about, or what we're going to focus on. I want to talk about the methodology in action. We got a mystery chart update. Actually, a couple of updates there. Uh, we want to do a brief TFM 10% updates, and I've have an altcoin trader too. And they didn't work out, spoiler alert, uh, like they have been lately, but we'll get to that in just one second. And then there's a couple of things I want to talk about with a million little things that will make you a successful trade. That's a series I've been doing as of late. And of course, Q&A, you can punch in your questions at any time. If you're on YouTube, there is a little bit of a delay with the simulcast. So just give me a minute or two to get to you, but I promise I will. I'm watching the screen with you guys over here. There's a flame screen, as you know, you can lose money trading, or as I often sum it up, all predictions about the future, and a lot of stuff can happen between now and then. There's my contact information. Once again, feel free to shoot a screenshot of that. And once this is live, or the edited version is live on YouTube, you can just obviously hit pause. I know you know all these things. All right, let's talk about the mystery charts and the methodology and action. A follow up on a mystery chart, and that's a CLOV trade. That's the original trade there, recommended first on H28. I forget which day it triggered. I don't have the trades in here, but uh, last week we did the trades. If you want to look at that, you can find those on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Dave Landry. Anyway, you can see the big blue arrow was pointing higher on this. Notice the slope, obviously of the 30 EMA, one of my favorite EMAs, if not the favorite EMA. Lots and lots of Landry light below. We did have one day with no Landry light. Landry light is just simply lows greater than the moving average for uptrends. And notice that this market did begin to accelerate higher before it pulled back and touched the moving average. And that finishes the pattern of a Landry light pullback. Now, keep in mind, that I actually use a blank chart when I'm doing my scans and I run very loose parameter scans and go through roughly 2,000 stocks. It's probably more like 1,500 lately based on the volatility, maybe 12 to 1,500 stocks, but it could be upwards of 2,000 stocks. And if you add in all the sector analysis and then uh, some of the charts I go back over again, it, it does begin to get closer to that 2,000 number. But keep in mind, I'm, I'm, I used to say hitting the button like the rat going for cocaine. Now I'm slapping that pedal. Uh, what's that? Um, Speed metal, there's a speed metal drummer that's a really fast drummer. I can't think of his name right now. But anyway, I'm hitting that. I get a little pedal uh, that I hit, and I have it programmed to where I just hit the pedal, and I go through charts, and I go back and forth in the charts like this. I will have to get a video of that one day. Entry was there. Stop was down here in the IPT, initial profit target, was up here. Now, one thing I've been showing here, and, and I'm going to get to this in a lot more detail, again, with the, the TFM 10% system. Is when you're when you're following a trend following system, there's going to be ups and downs. I know that's Captain Obvious, but when you tell people this, they, they look at you like you pooed your pants. <laughs> but when they're actually living through them, a lot of people give up. And the map is not the territory. The territory is the actual trading. We're like, oh great, hey, I just followed Dave in three or four days. I'm up four hundred dollars. That's great. Well, a week or so later, now you're down. $360 on the position. And by the way, that's on a hypothetical 100K account. I do take these own trades in a, in what I call my model account. Just got to fill or something. Oh, the peas. Okay. 
Anyway, so you can see it was up 400, down 360. It was kind of like womp, womp. And a lot of people, I would imagine, gave up. I did talk to a few people that gave up on it. And uh, one guy that toughed it out told me that, oh, it seems like it took forever. Well, the, the, what's amazing about it is it only took two weeks. And if you annualize this, and I forget the exact math, but I want to say it's like 600%. If you hit the I, just the IPT, in a couple of weeks time, and I think it was, uh, but it, counting weekends, it might've been a little longer, but I think it was only 14 trading days total. Anyway, so we did hit that IPT, and at the IPT, you're up 2,000 because you're risking 2% on a 100K account, which is obviously $2,000, and that's if you're stopped out. And we, when you hit the initial profit target, you bank half of your profit, so you sell half of your share so 2000 excuse me 2000 my wife warned me i was wolfing down a hamburger <laughs> before this and she said you're gonna you're gonna regret that during the show and boy i tell you she was right uh you know before i had a wife nobody told me these things anyway <laughs> so two percent and that's it stopped out not a two percent stop this one had a ridiculously high stop uh if we could i think the spreadsheet is here somewhere or did we just look at the spreadsheet? Anyway, uh, I'll tell you the percentage here as soon as I get it, like 30%. And a lot of people are like, I can't trade no 30% stop. It's like, well, you don't get no Coke, like you said in Caddyshack. Anyway, when you hit that initial profit target, again, you take half your shares off, and then you bring your stop up to break even. Even if that happens intraday, you bring your stop up to break even. Now, keep in mind that let's say a stock spikes higher, comes back in, and closes flat in a day. You would not actually adjust your stop on that because you didn't gain any ground, so to speak, on that trade. But anyway, we banked a thousand dollars on that, and now, barring overnight gaps, the worst we could do is break even. And I call that free rolling, and that's a name that Charlie Kirk gave me for that, which um, I appreciate. I'm supposed to call. I need to call Charlie. I need to check in with him. We hadn't talked in a while, but uh, from what I can understand, he's doing pretty good based on the Kirk report and such. He had a bad accident a while back, as you probably know. All right, we have a mystery chart. Oh, just one other point here, getting back to the to the money management. In pure trend following, which you're going to see an example of in a minute with the TFM 10% system, and, and that's one reason I wanted to follow that with 100 shares on the queues, just for s gs mostly, but then it turned into this wonderful learning example. I know I'm a nerd, but I'm kind of excited about how it's all shape it out especially since it's uh you know it's up about sixteen thousand dollars which is pretty nice too which i never dreamed of but with the pure trend following your drawdowns are going to be abysmal and your accuracy is going to suck to put it mildly if you're trading for swing to intermediate term where you're taking that swing trade profit hopefully it happens on kind of a swing trade basis over a few days a few weeks and you're getting that stop at the break even and taking those partial profits then you're playing with the market's money, so to speak, or free rolling, as I just said. But that helps to mitigate the drawdowns. And you know what? If you have a uh, position on, even if it's just 1% of your account have stopped out, or let me just rephrase that, even if it's just half the shares you began with, because we, we're going in with a fairly big size, if you think about it, 2% risk is a lot, okay? And anyway, 2% is plenty, and especially when you take it, it gets better when you take that 1% off or half that position off, okay? And then your drawdowns aren't quite as bad. And if you're getting in a lower price stock like this and you catch a, a major bottom, something like, like if you back this chart way out, we're just kind of getting started coming off the lows and like ARLP a while back. Uh, is it Jeff that's still long that? Uh, that one was, was coming off a of base and that thing just went up tremendous amount i think at one point it was maybe up 500 percent and once once you get those kind of crazy gains which believe me it doesn't happen often if it happened more often you probably never see my fat ass again but this those are the ones we live for right but if it if that's where the real money is and then believe me half of those shares especially with a lower price issue when you're putting on a lot of shares and it, and it becomes a higher price issue it it can really 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 pay off and 2% seems to be a sweet spot. If you get any bigger than that, it starts getting kind of ugly fast. And believe me, at 2%, you can get in a lot of trouble fast. And the drawdowns are plenty deep enough at 
All right, let's get back to that mystery chart reveal. And it was CSL. All right, here is the trade. And getting back to the CLOV, yeah, 33% stop. And a lot of people have trouble with that. It's like, well, hang on. We're going to adjust our share size down accordingly. In this spreadsheet, I'll give you a blank version if you want. And I think I keep forgetting if it's not, if it's behind a firewall now, but it's or not, but it's daylander.com slash member dash resources, I think. And you could get a copy of the spreadsheet, a blank one, obviously. And all you need to figure out is your entry and your protective stop, and then the IPT, the risk, and the share size per your account size, which you could put in here. And your risk, if you want to do that, is all calculated for you. By the way, if you are new to trading or new to my methodology and you want to become successful, start off with like a quarter of a percent, such a small size where it's nearly meaningless to you and see if you could follow it for six months. And if you do, and I would hope and, and believe me, you could go fairly long periods of time. The flat times could be abysmal too, you know, with trend trading, it could really be painful. And sometimes we're not doing anything. Like I'll go two or three weeks, sometimes even longer. I forget what my record was, but I think it was like 40 days or 50 days without a, a new trigger. I had setups during that period, but a lot of them didn't trigger. And the market, if you go back and look, was super choppy. And if I could ever find that, I have to try to find those that period of time. You can just probably look at the market and figure it out. But anyway, a lot of waiting and trend trading. But if you could do this for, let's say, six or eight months at a very small size and you're successful, either picking your own stocks or using my stock picks in my Landry list, then maybe bump to a half a percent. But oh, always go up a little and never up and down and up and down and up and down. You'll never become consistent. And get your reps in and get used to everything and you'll do really fine. And I have a lot of people, it's a revolving door. And I don't know what I could do to fix that. Maybe my onboarding needs to be better or something. I, you know, I don't, I don't sit around studying all these things as much as I should. I'm more interested in looking at the markets and seeing what's happening and trading than figuring out uh, this uh, onboarding for clients, so to speak. But uh, and if there's anything you ever need, just please contact me, and I'll try to get better at that. But that's one thing that Facebook. I'm getting a little sidetracked here. Obviously, that's one thing that Facebook group provides is a way for us to kind of help each other out. A lot of times somebody will ask a question, by the time I get around to answering it or see it, one or the other, somebody's already answered it and uh, answered it correctly, I, I must say. I must say, is that Martin Short? Not a fan. <laughs> anyway, so that's the parameters down there for the OS. And you can see it was, uh, it had lots and lots and lots of Landry Light, I'm sorry, the CSLR. Lots of Landry light, and it began to accelerate higher. So we had about 40 bars where it never touched the 30 EMA. And this down here is not magnitude, but simply number of days of Landry light. And a nice, again, uptrend. It pulls back to the moving average. When this happens, the Landry light goes to zero. And as I was I started to say earlier, I don't actually scan for a Landry light pullback. I'm just looking at blank charts. But this is a great type of scan if you want to scan for pullbacks. And then on the members resources page, I also have my scans, which are very loose parameter scans. And that's why it produces so many charts. And I, I, I think it's a, it's a wonderful exercise to go through all those charts every night. You really get a feel for the market, what's happening, what's working, and what's not. Uh, right now, I'm seeing a lot of choppy action, unfortunately. And we'll get to that in one second. But a lot of areas are improving, too. So there's the parameters. The entry would be here. The stop was down here. And the initial product for target was up here. Now, keep in mind that this is what happened after uh, several days of no entry, okay? And if you notice, it, it pulled all the way back to where it broke out from. So once it gets that far down, especially if you have like a prior base or something, it might still be in an uptrend. It might still go higher, but it no longer really fits my methodology. So when it doesn't trigger like that and it comes back to a base, again, no capital is put into harm's way. And I know I say this every week, but six months from now, somebody's gonna ask me, what do I do with CSLR? It's 40 cents a share. I'm like, 
40 cents a share at CLSR. What, is, what the hell is that? I'd never recommend a stock that's 40 cents a share and going straight down for months. It's like, yes, you did way back in October. I'm like, okay, you know, let me go look. I'm like, oh yeah, it never triggered. Okay, well, what do I do with it? Well, <laughs> should I own your stop, unfortunately? <laughs> I know it sounds harsh, but, you know, I know early on in my career, I was kind of like, oh, it'll all be okay and kind of fluffy and mamby-pamby. And now that I'm getting older and crankier, I'm finding myself just saying, just do it, okay? Don't, <laughs> you know, giving people a little tough love. And if you want tough love, I'll give it to you. And you're going to become a trader so much faster with that tough love. Believe me. I need to give myself a little tough love. And I'll get to that in one second. Anyway, that's the parameters. Now you can see the share size much smaller, 500 shares, because we're risking four points. Four points on a 100K account at 2% comes to 500 shares. Entry 33.50, protective stop 29.50, IPT, initial profit target 37.50. So the entry was there, stop was down here, and the IPT was here. Let's take a look at what happened. Well, this stock just imploded and never triggered. Now, I guarantee you, uh, when this thing gets down to 5 or $6 a share, going to get that same email again. Hey, Dave, what the hell do I do with that turd you recommended? <laughs> I need to find some new material, but it's so funny. The same things just happen over and over and over and over again. So once again, no capital was put into harm's way. Now let's do a brief update on TFM 10% system real quick. And I've done plenty of webinars where I talked about the, the genesis of this system, the designer's intent, so to speak. And the designer's intent was to avoid, as Ian McActivy, God bless his soul, love Ian. He was wonderful. Uh, one of the best presenters ever. I wish I could find some old videos of him so I could borrow from his presentations, some of his ideas. But anyway, uh, the idea is to avoid these diaper change moments, as Ian McActivy used to call them. And my thinking is just going back to technical analysis 101, which, by the way, is 99% of what I do is technical analysis 101, is that if a market is going to drop 50% or lose half its value, however you want to look at it, it's going to lose 10% of its value first. And for an index, that's a pretty good round number. And I have found in historical testing, and then five years at least, I would think, if anybody knows when, they, when I first put this out, or made this public, let me know. But in five years of having this uh, made public, uh, it's it's also avoided some really nasty spills. But the point I was getting to is that you would have avoided every bear market in history. It'd be some whipsaw here and there, don't get me wrong. But you would have avoided every bear market in history by following this silly little system. Now, the zones in here were inspired by Jeff, who is here tonight. And the green zone is less than 5% away from the 50-week closing high. The pink zone is 5% or more away, or 5 to 10%, if you want to look at it like that, from the 50-week closing high. And then the hot pink zone down here means you're 10% or more away from the 50-week closing high. I added in, you could run the system with just 10%, but I decided to add in a whipsaw filter vis-a-vis -vis the 50-day the 50 week simple moving average. And by the way, this is a weekly chart. Uh, one more other, by the way, too. Somebody was programming this system and they had like back to back sell signals. And I thought at first they were using a daily. This was on Twitter. I was working with somebody on Twitter, uh, our X now. And I thought they were using a daily chart because of all the signals. But what, what it was, was they would have like a sell signal and then a repeat sell signal a few weeks later. And they were showing that too which is fine, but technically your your first sell signal is where you want to get out. And then after a buy signal, then you can have another sell signal. So it's buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell, and so on and so forth. Anyway, so 50 week simple moving average, I'm using that for my whipsaw filter. It has to close below that and below the 50, and below, and 10% or more away from the 50 week closing high. And that was the sell signal there. Unfortunately, it turned out to be a whipsaw and the market went back up. Uh, it happens, or I probably already demonetized anyway. Shit happens. <laughs> the buys are a little more stringent. You need two bars of 
Landry light. I said I wouldn't go through all the details, but I did it anyway. <laughs> I just saved myself a half a dozen emails. Anyway, so that was the last buy in the P's. You can see that's been a pretty good run as of late. The sell would be below that 50 again and 10%, below 10%. Now, if that 50 gets above the 10% line, which is getting fairly close, let me back this out to doing, I'm, I'm pointing at my screen. <laughs> if it gets below, if it gets above the 10% line, like this is a 10% line, here's your 50 week moving average that crosses above it, you would still have to close below that 10%. Okay, so just the opposite sort of happening now. If you close below 10%, you would still have to also close below the 50 week moving average. So we're looking at 52.12 and then 51 something uh, down here. I can't read, it's too small. But you get the idea. These are fairly close. So that's the sell signal is going to be fairly close together. But sometimes one will stretch away from the other. But it has to close below both to exit. Now, what's kind of cool, and I know I'm a nerd. And I'm wondering if there's something here, maybe a little fodder for some more research. But notice that our zones are starting to move higher again, okay? So when you hit a 50-week closing high, the zones go up. And the zones don't go up again until you hit another 50-week closing high. Now, there's a lot of lag that's sort of built into the system on purpose. And that was part of designer's intent, too. I wanted a somewhat longer-term system that wouldn't be in and out, in and out, in and out, like the rat going for the cocaine, okay? But have enough, but rather have enough lag in it so you're not chasing your tail so much. So you get out of the market and you're not right back in it the next week, okay? So it takes a little time to, to, to reset. Now, in a longer term bear market, or if a market fails to make new 52 week highs for a while, after, I'm sorry, 50 week highs, after a while, 50 weeks, obviously, then those zones began to drop as they did back here. And this made for a wonderful setup in the queues, which I'll show you in just one second. The queues sold off for a while and the zones came down to meet the price. And that got us in really early. And it was a really awesome trade. And again, I'm gonna show you that in just one minute. But getting back to the zones, the zones are going higher. So I'm wondering if there's fodder for research here. You know, when the zones are rising, you want to be long when the zones are falling you want to be short i don't know just a thought anywho uh and as the composite you can see we had two bars of landry light above the 50 week moving average and we close within 10 percent of the 50 week closing high so we could actually close way down here as long as you have landry light as long as you're not closing 10 percent or more away from the 50 week closing high you're getting close to that closing high, okay, within 10%. And two bars of Landry like two lows greater than moving average. That's also like the 220 EMA breakout system. You can Google that and you can search for it on the website. I'm sure I, I have it somewhere on my website. So that was my entry there, 319.49. And then the stop would be right now it's at the 50 week moving average, which just looks like 440.97. And then the top, or the bottom of the zone, I should say, 10% line, okay, is 4.45.92 uh, looks like. So it, it would have to close below both to trigger a sell signal. Now, one thing I'm noticing here, which is pretty cool, I noticed earlier when I when I grabbed this chart, is even though on a on a daily basis the Nasdaq looks like a big picture retrace, meaning that it looks kind of like it could be double topish unless it gets bust out right past a prior peak. It doesn't look quite as bad on the weekly chart. It actually looks a little bit more bullish. Now, obviously, you still have to make new 50-week closing highs, which I can't read on this chart, but it's probably like uh, $4.99 or something like that. So I'd like to see, obviously, that happen, especially since I'm long 100 shares. Now, as I've been saying, again, there's a sell right there. So here's the, let me just rewind that. So there's your sell right here again below the 50 week moving average and below 10 percent of the 50 week closing high okay now if i did a mark to market earlier today i don't know if the queues ended much higher than that or where they ended but 493.44 is where i grabbed it minus 319.49 that's 174 points 
55%. When I put this trade on, I'm like, eh, let's just see what happens. This is S&G. Who cares? It's 100 shares. What difference does it make? Okay. And all of a sudden, it's like, wow, this thing turned into real money. Now, you can see uh, with 100 shares, again, uh, and I don't have any money management. This is just a pure system, okay? But it does show a lot of the nuances of a pure trend following system. But it also shows proof of concept that trend following can work. And by the way, what I was alluding to earlier was when I got into this thing, I never dreamed I'd have 170 something points of profit, a 55% move from a, from an index trade, right? I mean, 10% in an index is a huge move, but 55% that's a that's a huge as uh, Trump would say, right? But anyway, that's been a really 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 good run and when you get the point here comes the point. It's there, believe me. The point is with with trend following you don't know how far a market is going to go and you don't know long you don't know how long that's going to take but you don't care you're a trend following moron and believe me i used to try to outsmart the markets i became a trend following moron i didn't know i was a trend following moron i just started following the trends until a famous trader called me a trend following moron and he wasn't nice about it initially he was really nice to me and and, and he sent a lot of love my way and i and Kind of a long story. I, 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 it's about four or five pages. I've got it all written up in a book that I might publish someday. <laughs> Work on a, I'm always working on this book, and it's just going to be this. Uh, forget what they call it. What do they call it when it's uh, um, your greatest work or whatever? Something opus, whatever. With trend following, you don't know how far it's going to go, and you don't know how long it's going to take. And and as long as you're trading with the trend, you know that there's a good chance the trend will continue, but obviously it could reverse on you at any moment. Now, what used to kill me was back many, many years ago in the, in the mid 90s, early to mid 90s, I was previously a CTA, commodity trading advisor. And I probably didn't have to be registered for the role that I was in, but I just thought I would get registered and all. I haven't been a CTA in, in 20 years, probably. Anyway, I, I advised this hedge fund for 14 years, and he traded options. And so he was like, what do you think the market's going to do? I'm like, well, it looks like it's going higher. Well, how high is it going to go? I was like, I don't know, four points. Okay, well, how long is it going to take it to go four points? I'm like, oh, geez, it just, it's just, it, to trade options, you need to know the answers to all these questions. The point I'm getting to is if you're a trend follower, you don't have to know all the answers to all these questions. You just have to follow along. And believe me, it's easier said than done. Like last week in the presentation, somebody had gotten out of a of CLOV, okay, at at a at at its low. At, 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 a, at a sizable, not a sizable loss, but at a loss compared to where it is now, obviously below $3 a share. And then it obviously ran above four. And the reason they got out was because they had sat on it for a couple of weeks, right? And, and nothing happened. And they were actually at a small loss and they needed money for something else. And they took it out of that account and, and they, they got out of the trade. So it's a lot harder than it looks, but and it's like, I, I probably shouldn't tell people say, Dave, you got to stop telling people it's hard. Nobody's ever going to want to do this. Well, it is hard. OK, you could make it easy by by just do it. Just follow along. OK, and just say, what do I have to do? Nothing. OK, then do nothing. But as Mr. Ken Lambert once said, doing nothing is harder than it looks, especially if you are educated and motivated. Again, I got long here. And I never dreamed it would really take off like it did. I'm like, well, let's just see what happens. And then you can see it had a really, really nice run. And then all of a sudden, it starts drawing down. I'm like, oh, shoot. Now, I was up about six grand here. And then I drew down $4,400 and change. It's like, well, hang on. I just gave up 80% of my gains over a short period of time. And if it would have stopped out, I would have ended up giving up 100% of my gains and maybe and then some. So trend following, especially a pure system like this, can be pretty tough. And I know I pick on the turtles a lot. What the turtles did was nothing short of amazing. And a lot of people try to piggyback off 
their success. But unfortunately, it ended badly for most of them, okay? And I don't want to get into that. I've seen a lot of forums out there over the years talking about the Turtles and everything. But what they did when they did it was nothing short of amazing. They also happened to be in the right place at the right time. And if you read Curtis Faith's books on that, The Way of the Turtle, I think is his. I would, I would, I would never throw anybody at the bus, but don't read a turtle book that wasn't written by a turtle. <laughs> okay. That's what I would suggest. And that's just, that's just the way I see things. But Curtis Faith, he was a turtle. He also wrote Trading from the Gut, which I need to reread because that's a great little book to read. If you go to davelanner.com slash books dash two dash read, and I think there's plenty of links down below if you're watching a recording of this, you can get a list of the books that I recommend. But uh, read Curtis Faith's book. But anyway, Curtis Faith said that halfway through the program, they realized that they were risking way too much. So they could have easily blown up halfway through the program and a lot of the other a lot of the traders from the program went on to blow up later unfortunately i'm not gonna be i'm not shot in friday believe me but it just it happens right but anyway if you look at some of the drawdowns here that's another 3600 and this one hurt a little bit okay again this all started with like ah, eh, let's just see what happens i'll throw you know put my money where the mouth is it looks like it works in the queues i went back and did some back testing real quick i said that eh, looks pretty good to queues queues were set up as a buy so I went ahead and bought in. Never dreamed it would go this long and far. I don't want to come back and say, look, all you have to do is just buy here and you make $16,000. You know, well, I didn't know I'd make $16,000 because that's what trend following, like the hokey pokey, is all about. You just follow along, right? And again, there's no money management in this to mitigate these drawdowns. Maybe uh, at some point I should put a little money management in, but for now, I just want to keep this a pure system and see what happens drawdowns and all warts and all right so that was pretty ugly but fortunately it's come back quite a bit and we're almost to a new equity high on this all right any questions on anything thus far okay thought it'd be kind of cool tonight i'm a nerd to show you something that a guru has never shown you it should be you and not your has never shown your sound like uh medea <laughs> So I'm trying to think, this was, I don't remember this one. I think this is what I got into one of the shows and said I would follow up on it. I thought it was more recent, but you can see I got it on the 26. And I think it was during the show and it just looked like it was breaking out, going to the moon. And then it came right back in. Now, I don't trade breakouts, except again, as I beat the dead horse on, occasionally in IPOs, and in the shit coins when they're really moving right now they're not really kind of going crazy but a few of them are moving here and there you know, we'll take a look at those in one second but because this breakout wasn't working i decided to bail out and it cost me about 100 bucks so i know i've showed you some recent trades lately and these shit coins where they all seem to work out and i showed you how i mined off some bitcoin from the trades go back in and look at the playlist on youtube but here's one that flat out didn't work so i want to show you that sometimes it doesn't work okay so it's a losing trade something a guru other than me has never showed you okay one of my side projects that i restarted i think end of may was a landry 100 and it's a hundred slots so to speak cash is treated an asset class as an asset class he tried to say so if i can't find 100 stocks then uh, the slots are filled up with cash this is a hype this is all hypothetical although i am tracking it in real time so today i took a couple of them out i can't remember which ones i can look at the spreadsheet and see but and then i added a couple new ones in anyway the proof of concepts and, and i did this years ago and and i wish i'd have kept up with it but i think what happened the market got really really choppy and then they discontinued the software i was using to track it and I still don't have tracking software on this. So what I'm doing is every time I close a trade out, I throw it into a spreadsheet. I don't have money management per se. There's no stops on any of this. But what I do is as markets begin to weaken, even if they're up 150%, they start weakening, I don't ride, I ride them all the way back down. I will get out of the position. And a lot of times 
at least lately, since the market overall has done okay, I'm going to see a lot of choppy action here, a lot of questionable areas too, in just a few minutes. But overall, the market's done fairly well. So I've had plenty enough stocks to go in, enough so to where if I really, really like some stocks and I think they should be in the list, okay, then I'll knock some of the weaker stocks out. So this is all performance based. As I said before, run your stock portfolio like you would your fantasy football team, okay? You're not going to draft or whatever they call it, the worst player in the NFL, okay, to put on your fantasy football team, you're going to pick the best, right? So run your portfolio in the same way. So that's exactly what I'm doing here. In order to go into the list, right now I have it set for a 50-week closing high. I do remember in the past, because I couldn't find enough stocks at 50-week closing highs, I'm sorry, 52-week closing highs for this. So what I had to do was go down a little bit, a little further down to like 90-day closing highs or maybe even lower than that. But anyway, right now I'm right at 52-week closing highs and I can give you the formula, it's literally that big. And this is how I pick the stocks. I sort them by historical volatility, 50-day historical volatility. And I tend to pick the more volatile stocks first as I go down a list, provided they have a little structure and not like a ton of overhead resistance further back. And a lot of the things that I do in stock picking, although I am a little bit more liberal with this list because I just want to get the hot stocks in here and not judge them too much. And, and it's just a tremendous amount of benefits from doing this every day, even though it's I'm not going to say a lot of work. It's just more work piled on everything else I do. But I get to see where the money is flowing. Uh, I think I might have added back. I kicked out some gold stocks not long ago. And I think today I might have added back a couple because some gold stocks begin taking off a little bit today. Some silver stocks woke up today. And it really alerts me to all these things. And so the SMCIs and the NVIDIAs, the future ones that is, should pop up and be in this list so at least they're on my radar so i get to see where the money's flowing i get to see what sectors are hot and so on and so forth and i found an old presentation somewhere on my website i'll have to look for it again you might just be able to type in landry 100 where i took a, a 3d model of uh like a, a what do you call that like a pie chart of all the sectors and all and i thought that was pretty cool but uh, i really don't have a lot of software to, to do these things that i used to do anymore it's a shame that Software is kind of going backwards a little bit from where it was. But here's the list. And like I said, in weeks prior, all of these stocks were brought at, bought at brand new highs. And this one's up 92%. I think they had one recently stopped at like 150%. Stopped at, I pulled it out at 150%, but it ran over 200%. I don't have, again, any money management in this because it's kind of like a proof of concept thing. But what I've kind of toyed with the idea of doing is um, maybe at 100% take off half of the position. But you can see those numbers are pretty good. And in the next chart, I have them sorted by percentage gains. But you can see the oldest one in here is from June, okay? So I started this thing, again, I think it was in late May. And all the ones from May have been kicked out. And now we only have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, five are left over from June. But look at these numbers. These are pretty good numbers and annualized, they're ridiculous, right? 40%, 30%, 49%, 21%, and so on and so forth, okay? You got one losing here from August, and it's only at 2% on the loss. And I think it just, it kind of pulled back a little bit. It still looks pretty good. In fact, speaking of pullbacks, you could see this was added on this day here, okay? right there brand new highs so i added it in and then what did it do immediately it immediately began to implode a little bit now if you were just going out there and buying two or three stocks that are making new highs you probably do a lot better than buying lows right but i would recommend that if you were to do something like this you need a, a sizable portfolio and this morning i woke up thinking how big does that have to be? And I don't have the answer to that, okay? With 100 stocks, that's plenty big enough. Could I do it with 50 or 25? Maybe, you know, because I someday, if I, I would, I know, knowing me, if I keep watching this thing do what it's, what it's doing, eventually 
I'm going to want to figure out a way to, to do this for real because it is a pretty easy way to, to run a momentum portfolio. Maybe in my next life I'll do that. But anyway, from where we got in this, where the Landry 100 got into it to today, it's up 92%, 93% or so. Now, again, these are sorted by tracking date. And so you can see the oldest is uh, June 6th. And there's only a few left from June. So the, the stronger ones will stay in. Okay, as I've said, a nauseam. Everyone thinks when they learn how to trade, there's going to be this huge epiphany and all of a sudden they get it. Okay, we're good to go. It doesn't work that way. It's really a million little things that make you a successful trader. Number 42,087 is, it, it, believe me, I'm, this one went in this week because I need to pay attention to this. I don't ever want to come across holier than now. With my core trading, like I said, I think it was last week, I talked about how Linda asked me, she doesn't like anyone to see what trade she's in because it messes with her mind because she's always used to, uh, as she said, keeping her cards close to the vest, Linda Rasky. And I'm kind of just the opposite with my core trend trades because I have the trading service and it's like that CLOV and, and what would the world be without hypotheticals, said Mr. Wright. But hypothetically, I don't know that I could have stayed in that CLOV for those two weeks plus weekends, whatever it was, watching that thing go from a profit down to a loss and just sitting in there, okay? Uh, if I wasn't showing you that Q trade, I'd have been out a long time ago, okay? I'd have probably got out when that thing started drawing down and probably would have made two or $3,000 on it, thinking I'm a freaking genius, right? And then pull it up, you know, today and see if I'd have just hung on, I'd be up $16,000, $17,000, whatever it was. But anyway, so for me, making things public, it forces me to to do the trades, just like that CLOV trade, at least in the model account, I do have it in more than one account and I do follow it pretty much the same as the model too. But on that CLOV trade, I'm forced to follow it so I can show you the trade that I took, okay? Anyway, so this one is probably just as much for me as it is for you, anybody else who wants to learn how to trade because I do a lot of the stupid things I'm getting ready to show you. But you need to ask yourself, is the action I'm about to take moving me toward or away from my goal? If you read any of these motivational books, that's one of their underlying themes. Are you going toward your goal or away from it? Now, so again, ask yourself, are you moving toward or away from the goal but right before you make that next trade, okay? And here are a few of over a million examples, and each one of these could probably be fleshed out and to a million little things. It's funny, it's kind of like I was putting this together tonight and I thought right before I came back in, right there, grab some water a second ago before I came back to my office, it's like, shoot, I'm always trying to think, okay, what are the million little things? Think, 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 Dave, think. And then all of a sudden I'm like, I just realized it's, when I did this tour away, I came up with another dozen million little things. So I think just asking yourself that in and of itself, is going to help you also unearth many of these million little things. So toward, obviously, you honor your stop, okay? A way would be pulling a stop and hoping. You could maybe use a little discretion around a stop. That's fine if you have a little experience with that. But what I'm saying is just hodling something that you should have stopped out a long time ago. Resisting just this once trades, okay? That's... That's one of our flaws as human beings, and I don't know if that's that's a crazier or neurology, or it's a little bit of everything. And I think it's a time, what they call a time inconsistency or whatever. It's like, a, I'm gonna work out tomorrow, and then tomorrow, like, I'm gonna work out tomorrow. And, or it's like, I'm gonna eat this fatty food or bad food, whatever, sugary food, and then tomorrow I'll start diet or whatever. So a lot of times, and I'm guilty, believe me, guilty as charged, as the just this once trade, like, okay, I'm gonna do this just this once. I'm not gonna risk a whole lot and it should be fine. So you wanna make sure you resist those. And then, you know, it all comes back to that original gauge, was, gauge that I used was the FEA trades too. Ask yourself, is this an FEA trade? Well, if it's an FEA trade, you'd feel stupid if you didn't take it. 
you'd be really pissed if that market took out, off without you because everything was lining up, okay? All the planets were in line for you to take that trade and you didn't take it, you'd be mad if it took off without you. On the flip side, if it failed miserably as I preach and it was one of these fantastic looking trades, F yeah trades, and it failed miserably, you say, eh, who cares? Yeah, drop an F-bomb. My, my f is getting rusty. I'm gonna have to paint it. <laughs> it's getting a little gnarly looking. So I gotta be careful dropping it. Jesus. <laughs> uh, I left the mark. All right, so don't take just once trades. Just this once trades. Uh, waiting for entries, what did I just preach about earlier? And the reason I do that is because I guarantee you, six months from now, somebody send me an email on it and um, you know, maybe not after all this preaching, but I'd be willing to bet somebody still will. And you know what? When that email comes in, I'm going to capture it and say, look, this is why I beat the dead horse. So wait for those entries and that'll keep you out of a lot of trouble. And and I do way too much intraday trading than I should. And I'll get to that in just one second. But lately, one thing that I've done, it's something I discovered a long time ago, but one thing I've forced myself to do more and more lately because the market's been kind of choppy, especially intraday. I mean, it takes off and it goes back down and it comes back. You look at the daily chart, it looks a lot better than it does intraday, believe me, especially if you're watching too many zigs and zags. But instead of saying, okay, this looks good, I'm gonna get in, then I, I, instead I put in a stop just above the market and I'm shocked at how many losing trades I'm missing just because of that, how I'm avoiding putting capital in the harm's way. Same thing goes with the core methodology, okay? The core methodology, you have an entry, which is fairly liberal above the market, okay, on a daily chart. And if it never triggers, it never triggers. And I get a lot of emails from people, hey, I'm in this stock you mentioned a week ago, and I'm like, it hasn't triggered yet. It's like, hey, I know, I know, but I just thought I'd get a little early. Try to resist doing that, unless, of course, we're in the motherball bull markets and you are a little bit more educated, knowledgeable, experience is the word I'm looking for as a trader. And you're like, okay, I know I'm front running it, but I think it's worth front running. But you can get a little bit pregnant. So be careful and only front run if conditions are really, really conducive. And again, that's another one of those things that, that makes me a better trader is if I recommend a setup, I can't front run it, okay? Because I don't want to front run ahead of you. You can front run ahead of me if you want, but I'm not going to front run it just in case it doesn't trigger and six months from now it goes to zero. Boy, documentation, I can't say enough about this. And I know I beat the dead horse on it, but obviously document your trading. And when you're documenting your trading, also document your emotions a lot, uh, document stupid little things like walking into the office. Every time I walk into the office, I wanna make a trade, as I've said a thousand times. And I figured it out. There's a neurology behind that because I'm I'm hangry before I leave the office, okay? Usually it's around breakfast or lunch. And then I'm happy when I come back. And it was uh, Irley, Dan Irley, I think is his name. Great author. I'd encourage you to read his books. I haven't read uh, anything from him in a while. I'm sure he's got some new books out, but um I'm trying to think of some of the, he does a lot of behavioral science type of books. And they're really, really, really good. But uh, he talked about the hangry judge effect. He referenced that, and that was the Israeli, Israeli judges were giving far more harsher sentences in the morning than they did after lunch. And that's because the judges were hangry before lunch. Now, again, document your trading, document your life. When you're documenting your trading, you need to say, okay, I, I, I oh, you know, if, if you say F, then write that in your trading journal. And why are you dropping? an F-bomb and get in touch with your emotions when you're writing that trading journal. You can you cannot eliminate emotions, that's neurology, but you can embrace them, okay? But document your trading and then document your life. As I say, do your morning pages every day without going into a lot of details. Wake up and write 300 pages. That's going to unearth a lot. I always write down, whether I got to bed early or late, how I slept, and so on and so forth. My my wife does this alligator roll, which she 
yanks all the covers. <laughs> she also does a lot of strange behavior. Like she'll tap me on the head sometimes in the middle of the night for nothing. Two nights ago, she did that. And usually she taps me on the head because it's time for me to wake up because my alarm goes off. I have earplugs in. I'm throwing her under the bus. I know she's, she's not going to watch this. She talks a lot in her sleep too. <laughs> she just went on a girl's trip and yeah, the girls were like, does Dave complain about you talking to your sleep? So, yeah, that's why he wears earplugs and that's why I brought you girls earplugs. <laughs> but anyway, so she woke me up at 3 a.m. and it was a little tough getting back to sleep. I reached over for the alarm like, 3 a.m., are you kidding me? <laughs> but anyway, document your trading, document your life, and uh, moving away from your goal will be hiding the evidence. As I said a thousand times, got a client really smart and really good trader when he wants to be. And he was, but he has ups and downs. He prints money and then he has a, a bad period and then he prints money and has a bad period. Sort of like all us traders, but then he kind of, he kind of goes, the wheels kind of come off the bus or he goes off the rails, whatever analogy you want to use for it. And one time I said, look, you know what you're doing. Show your wife my trading service and say, look, I'm following this guy. I'm going to follow every trade he recommends. And he, he himself will tell you he's not the grand poobah. There will be losses. One of the things I can guarantee over time, okay, and again, no guarantees, but over time, we should do okay, okay, and then we'll occasionally catch some home runs, and it's going to make it all worthwhile, but there's going to be a lot of ups and downs, and I'm just going to follow this guy, but I'm going to show you every trade that I make and how I just follow this guy, and this came from after he had did a lot of day trading, and I looked at his account because he made me, and I figured out that he did okay following my stuff. It wasn't a print money phase, believe me. He actually was profitable over this period of time, but he, the reason he lost money was because he made all his day trades. And then when I told him, he said, I know, I know. So in another conversation, I was like, well, why don't you do everything you just said and tell your wife and have her hold you accountable? And he said, oh no, that would end the marriage. Well, I'm throwing him under the bus, but guess what? I, I, I probably, a lot of things it's like, she'll never know, <laughs> believe me. Letting the market come to you. I threw this one at the last minute. This is this is vitally important. If I let the market come to me, I can print money. I'm pretty good at doing that. I'm far from perfect, but I'm pretty good at doing that with the core methodology because I don't want to look like an idiot. I only want to show you the best stuff, which has forced me to take only the best stuff. I'll start getting emails after a couple of weeks of no recommendations, do all my market analysis, show you my hit list or whatever we call it, the Landry list and all that. And then... But then I'll say, you know, there's nothing to be done, so let's not do anything. That's what I did today, by the way. And people start getting a little anxious, but I've learned that I'm better off letting the market come to me. So the core methodology, I do that. With anything else, I'm looking at all these screens, and then I'm firing off trades. And I, I, I took some futures home. That's what you might have heard earlier. Knock on wood, looks like it's okay. Futures up six points. That would be maybe one of my away problems. <laughs> Now, let the market come to you. Sometimes it means a lot of waiting. The waiting is the hardest part, said Tom Petty. Uh, doing nothing is harder than it looks, Kim Lambert. And there's a lot of more quotes on, on waiting that I often write and talk about. But anyway, hyperactivity, recreational trading, trading out of boredom, all these things can get you into a lot of trouble. All right, let's shift gears and hop into crypto. Any questions while we're shifting gears? Okay, we take a look at crypto. Let's take a look at Bitcoin first. And Bitcoin has been pretty abysmal. Between 65 roundish numbers and 72 is a mountain of, I wouldn't say a mountain, but a lot of overhead supply. Again, as I often preach, technical analysis doesn't have to be that technical. We're just looking at a lot of charts, right? And you can see lots and lots of trading up there. So Bitcoin's gonna have a hard time getting through 50, 65 to 72. I would not be a buyer, likely, never said ever, but I would likely not buy it for position trade at least. I might be sucked into a day trade, okay, guilty as charged. But for position trade, I would not even consider buying Bitcoin unless, until unless it got about $72,000. I remember buying it at around new highs at 18,000. I thought I was the biggest idiot in idiot town because what what idiot in his right mind would buy this Bitcoin, which is nothing, right? <laughs> well, it's something, right? At $18,000. And now I'm making trades in the 60,000s and 70,000. So I wouldn't buy it actually until it hit 70,000, 
seventy-two thousand or, or so. But anyway, it's just meandering back and forth around the. Let's see if I can get a, a live chart on it. So one thing that I'd encourage you to do, and I've been, I started working on a, a tweet I wanted to put out, and I didn't, I didn't get it finished. But essentially, what I wanted to show is I wanted to show the thirty EMA, and I wanted to show if I can get this slide slid over, that'd be great. I wanted to show how you could pay attention to that Landry light, not just for trends, but also to keep you out of trouble when the market is not trending, okay? So I'm gonna bring, let's see if this will work. We'll bring this over here. Yeah, it worked, wow. So pay attention to the Landry light, pay attention to when the markets, and if you look down here, okay? So when you see something like this, okay? And I did a whole series with stock charts just on Landry light, like Tarzan speak, okay? That's how I speak uh, when I go to uh, Italy. <laughs> Bisogno, cibo, <laughs> dove, you know, it's like uh, Tarzan speak, right? So Tarzan speak, this is good, okay, good, okay? So you want lots and lots of Landry light in markets. Look at this, look at this trend. I feel like tiny elbows, it's huge, okay? 70 bars of upside Landry light, okay? Now, when you're getting upside, downside, or none, none would be when it touches the moving average, that is a choppy market. Now, don't forget to draw your sideways lines, your trend line sideways, okay? To see what the market is doing. Don't buy a market just because you have some Landry light, make sure it's trending and ideally accelerating in that trend. So the point I'm getting to, and believe it or not, I have one, is notice that we're flipping back and forth, upside Landry light, downside Landry light, upside Landry light, okay? Downside Landry light, upside Landry light, downside Landry light. So that's a choppy market, okay? Or you could just eyeball it and say, well, it's going up and down and up and down and up and down. Nothing to do here. Ethereum is even worse. You could see we had, oh, we could do Ethereum over here. Watch this. I know, I'm a nerd, I don't care. Look at the Landry, look at the Landry light to the downside, it's huge, okay? This thing sold off, sold off, sold off, sold off, sold off, sold off, kiss moving average, sold off a lot more, okay? It kind of bottomed out a little bit, tried to make upside Landry light, it did it for about 10 days and nope, came right back down, tried to get back up, went back to zero, and now we're back to a count of four, okay? One, two, three, four four days of downside of three and a half days of downside Landry light, okay? Now, if you look at Ethereum Bitcoin, it is it is really, really, really ugly. Let's see if we could do that. And by the way, that's a cool little trick, okay? So you could put S&P versus NASDAQ, you can put a stock versus S&P, one stock versus another, and it gives you a nice little ratio chart, I think is what they call that. But you can see that this, has been abysmal for a long, long time. It might be easier to see here. Look at the look at the Landry light to the downside with the 30 EMA with ETC, ETH, BTC. Okay. So that's a market you do not want to buy. You do not want to buy Ethereum over Bitcoin. You don't want to buy either of them, either of them right now, okay? But you especially don't want to buy Ethereum over Bitcoin. If you had to buy Bitcoin over Ethereum, but don't do either right now. As I alluded to earlier, when these markets are blowing and going, sometimes you can just short sort by the strongest, easier for me to say, and buy the ones that are busting out to new highs. Okay. This one looks like it's a little thin, but you can see it's trying to break out. So that might be something that would catch my eye. See. Anyone, uh, as I often say, and I know I'm beating a dead horse, but it's it's so much good information, if I say so myself, if you just follow it, never, as a general statement, buy a market that is trading below its 30 EMA. And as I beat the dead horse each week, look, go through all of these, and you're going to be shocked at how many just absolutely implode below that 30 EMA. Now above the 
EMA, you know, like back here, this was probably, I have to go back and look at some trades, but back here, this looked fantastic. You see it's beginning to take off, get some energy light, bring out new highs, and then shot higher. And keep in mind, I've got these sorted by the strongest, and look how many weak ones are well below that 30 EMA. All right, any pairs you guys want me to look at, I'd be happy to. All right, let's shift gears and go to stocks, and I'll do a quick market update. And if you have any stocks you want to look at, I'll be happy to look at them. By the way, here's the Landry Light. I'm sorry, Landry Light. The Landry 100, okay? And you can see there are some losers in here, right? But they still look okay longer term. So we'll see what happens with these. And again, maybe some other ones will, will put out. Generac went in a couple days ago. I, I try to just close my eyes a little bit. This wouldn't necessarily be a stock I would trade unless it trended for a while. But it was breaking out to new highs, and that's all I care about for this particular list, okay? Anyway, let's take a look at the overall market and drill down a little bit. S&P 500 broke out yesterday to all-time highs. Pretty excited about that. We had a little wedge in here. It wedged up a little bit, and then it sold off out of the wedge, and then it recovered to take out the top of the wedge, which is a good thing, a bear flag, if you want to call it that. And now we had an inside day today. Choppy, choppy, choppy. It's been choppy lately. But I'd like to see it obviously break out to new highs and stay there for a while. You know, routine though, take things one day at a time. NASDAQ Composite, the back to chart way out, like I said earlier, has a big picture retrace look to it. I'd like to see it make brand new highs and, of course, stay there before getting too excited about NASDAQ. Let's take a look at the Rusty. The Rusty is just. <laughs> Rusty in the minus column today, it's just electric cardiogram. It's wide listed sideways, not a market you want to be trading. I sure wish the Rusty would kick it into gear. There's some strong sectors out there. The cybersecurity, there's hack. And take a look at cyber, CIBR, break it out to all time highs. Take a look at cloud computing, break it out to all time highs. Software, BAM, winning, breaking out to all-time highs. So those are good-looking sectors, okay? Defense, all the wars and shit going on. <laughs> I know it just confused the issue with facts, but defense, it's looking pretty good. Nice little uptrend, pulling back a little bit. So that looks pretty good. Lithium has been melting up as of late. It's just going straight up. So maybe we'll find some opportunities in lithium stocks fairly soon. Gold has generally been strong, but it has also been a bit of a, a mixed bag. You could see nice little pullback. It's trying to rally out of the pullback, so gold looks pretty good. And what's interesting is today notwithstanding, because today I, some gold stocks caught my eye, but as a general statement, gold stocks are wide and loose and not trending as well as the underlying commodity. And usually just the opposite happens. That would be enough, that'd be something fun to do. Punch in GLD colon GDX, and I'll do it tomorrow, see what it looks like. But that might be a fun little exercise. On the downside, take a look at like the NASDAQ biotech. You can see triple top remains in place there. Bow tie to the downside. That's looking pretty ugly. How's that for an oxymoron from a trend following moron? <laughs> take a look at major drugs. They retraced 100% of the recent breakouts. If there's any stock picks, please uh, start typing them in now so we can uh, we'll get them covered. Oops. Okay. Let me check. Double check here. I just realized I didn't have the window open. Oh crap! We've got all kinds of uh, things coming in. Okay. The uh, thank you, Frenchie. So the way of the turtle was Curtis Facebook, and then if one of you guys read the other books by other people, I just felt like they were kind of uh, parasiting on you know, to these guys' success. And it, it just pisses me off. Like today, I saw a YouTube ad. They talked about how great the turtles were. And then they said, and if you just buy our artificial intelligence system, it'll pick stocks for you. It's like, wait a minute. What does that have to do with the turtles? Okay. <laughs> it's like, it, you know, there used to be these great traders. And hey, let me sell you something that has nothing to do with this. So it just pisses me off. Sorry about that. 
Club initial entry was three and stop was two. Thank you, Jeff. Chat GPT says 384 stocks to get a good statistical sample of NYSE, assuming a 50% probability and a 95% confidence level. Okay, that's that's a good to know. I'm not sure how that works into the proof of concept. So I'm I'm trying to get I'm trying to just pick the momentum stocks and how many momentum stocks do I do I need? I don't want to mimic the market. Ideally, I'm seeking alpha, right? So I want to try to beat the market with the Landry 100. And by the way, those momentum stocks, as I've said many times before, and right now I don't have, uh, thank you, author, I got that. I'll, we'll take a look at that in just one second. Uh, that list, and I wish I had a way to track the performance on a day-by-day basis. I said it's each week and I never get around to, to looking into it, but I used to have a piece of software, I think Stock Charts made it, Stock Finder, I think, of memory serves. And they no longer put that out, if, if, if unless I'm mistaken. But I was able to track all these things, and and this list would get whacked. And I know I've said this before, but but there's something there's something valuable here. This thing would get crushed. And now I'm just gonna have to go through all hundred every day, as I do anyway. But it would get crushed. And the market sometimes would be making new highs, and this thing would get crushed. I'm like, what the hell's going on? You know, my stocks stocks all the way all of a sudden suck. And then three or four late four days later, it's like setting a little a little a light in a fuse, right? Three or four days later, starting a timer, the market would crash. And I, I that would be so valuable if I if I could get that up and running again. I just there's so much going on, there's not enough time. But if I can get that up and running again with some kind of software, and all of a sudden I see this thing get whacked three or four percent or five percent, it's like aha. Market didn't do a whole lot, but I know that market's going to sell off hard over the next few days, and maybe it might set up a wonderful opportunity for an intraday trade, uh, maybe with some with some SG options. I just preached about not SG trading, but if you have a bit of an edge going into something, then it's okay to take SG trades. And I'm talking small, you know, nickel and dime stuff, 100 bucks or something like that, with some out of the money options, maybe some zero DT options out of the money where you're kind of pissing your money away. But if that if that uh, timer is ticking, okay, then maybe it, there might be something there. So please, somebody remind me of this at some point in time, so so we could do some work on this. But I think there's something there. All right, major drugs, bow tie to the downside. They're actually today's action sort of completes the bow tie, or yesterday's action did. So any sell off from here, you had a lot of support below. I wouldn't rush out and short the PPH, but this is good information to know that. This um, that that drugs, major drugs at least, aren't doing well. Okay, so Jeff says 100 stocks will cover one standard deviation. Okay, you're gonna have to, you might have to mansplain me that a little bit. So we need to talk about that. Let's talk about that first chance you get um, in Facebook. Okay, uh, let me just look at a couple more sectors here, wrap this up, and then we'll jump into your stock picks. I, I wasn't seeing them because my chat was closed over here, so I apologize. And I see uh, Arthur, I got you. You're next. Real estate is beginning to falter a little bit. Real estate has been pretty strong for a while in here. And now it's beginning to roll over. We're almost to a bow tie to the downside. I would not I would not stick a fork in real estate just yet. But we're down to the 50 simple moving average. It's a pretty serious pullback. And so it's kind of crazy. So one standard deviation gives you uh, 70% confidence. Okay, I got you. So... I'm looking for the fat tail. So how do we capture that fat tail? That's what I'm doing with the core methodology is I'm trying to figure out how to capture that outlier type of trade, that Ford 500% move, 76% confidence. Okay, thank you. Okay, so real estate, not so hot. So make sure you wait for entries if you go after anything there. There's a few that are showing up, but it's hard for me to get too excited about REITs in general, although they have been trending and I might be forced to buy some REITs. There were a lot of REITs that went into that Landry 100 because I had to, right? And so that, that's got me looking at that. So this type of research is very valuable, I think. But again, I am a nerd. Semiconductors, a bit of a bummer. They have worked, they were higher, admittedly, okay? And we do have bow tie proper order to the upside, but they have a bigger picture retrace look to them. So I wouldn't get too excited about the semis until unless, for me, believe it or not, I like to see all-time highs before getting excited about the semis. 
Now, when you're at low levels and you're bottom out like this and you get a bow tie, that's fine. Okay, if you're at 10 year lows and you're bottoming out and you make a big bow tie, cup and handle, or any other transitional pattern, first thrust, all that other good stuff, Phoenix strategy, that's beautiful. But at high levels like this, I want to see new highs. I'm not looking to play a trans, I'm not looking to see this happen and play a transition. I'm, I would rather see like that happen and then play the transition like at multi year lows as opposed to this zigging and zagging it's doing now, mid-levels. What else is happening? Oh, let's take a look at bonds real quick. Bonds have been a real disappointment. You can see they've pretty much imploded as of late. Bonds down, rates up. I thought they were cutting rates, so why is why are bonds going down? I don't know. Cutting, it's it kind of hurts your head to figure it out. Cutting rates, rates should go down, but cutting rates causes inflation. <laughs> so it makes rates go up. So just be a trend following moron and don't try to figure it all out. But you can see bonds down, obviously, rates up. Financials, a bit of a bummer today. They were trying to break out. Now we've got a minor triple top work. It kind of reminds me of the IBB not that long ago. I sure would like to see them break out and not look back. Health services, questionable. As you can see, or healthcare, I should say. You can see selling off a little bit in here, kind of a bow tie-ish to the downside. So that's pretty much a sector action. The point is that it's really, 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 really mixed out there. Okay, let's go back to a blank chart. And let's take a look at some of your stock picks or all of your stock picks. We should have enough time. Author has been waiting patiently for NRG. And that looks pretty good, okay? Uh, we just talked about utilities. Utilities looking pretty good. You can see it broke out a little wide and loose in this space, but it broke out and now it's beginning to pull back. That looks okay. You got a nice little trend knockout move. Okay. I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I wouldn't take the trade. I'm trying to figure out why. Okay. That's something I don't like. And I can't, at, at first glance, it looks really, really good. I suppose that it's pulled nearly all the way back to its base. That would have me concerned. But, Here's the deal. If you like it, I can't fault it too much, right? A little wide and loose action here has got me a little concerned. I'd much rather see something trend nicely and have an orderly pullback. This wasn't deep enough, but something like back here as opposed to get wide and loose. But we did break out and it is pulling back. You did have a few days, or quite a few days in that breakout. So I can't fault you too much other than this wide and loose base. Here's the deal though. The TKO, the entry would be close to 94. And you could stop out below this low. So I would say, especially given the conditions today, the fact that it is, oh, it's 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 energy. Okay, it's not a utility. Okay. Well, that that's one of my concerns. It says utility though. Okay, we got to figure out what this is. Utility or energy. Let's see what sector it brings me to. How do we do this? Watch list. Energy member of. Uh, What's another way of doing this? I do all this stuff when I'm not online, but I have, oh, here we go, industry. Utilities, independent power, so it's a power producer. Okay, interesting. Yeah, that's, I'm gonna give that a solid okay. Again, don't like the wide and loose, don't like the pull back almost all the way to the, to the base, but it's a super nice TKO, almost textbook in nature, because if the market gets all the way back to the, to the, top of the TKO, the trend knockout bar, this bar right here, then it might be worthwhile. Uh, by the way, somebody was saying that I use a lot of jargon that they're not familiar with. If you want my books, I'll give them to you for free. DaveLearner.com slash free dash book. And you'll get all three books. I think it says layman's when you click on it, but you'll get all three in PDF format. And some of the jargon is in there. And then I'm, I'm going to try to do a better job at Facebook to uh, make sure I don't use too much jargon, make sure everybody knows. And that's why I beat the dead horse so much because I'll say all these things and thinking everybody knows. And then people say, well, I don't understand what you just said. So I'll have to go back in and repeat myself a lot. C-A-P-R, crazy one. John is our resident IPO guy. Is this an IPO? No, not an IPO. Yeah, this is this is crazy even, even for me. Uh, whew. Okay, uh, that's a good eye on that one, John. Uh, it's just melted straight up. 
HV is 169. Not that I would not trade a stock with a with with an HV that high, but it's I'm having a hard time getting excited about this one just because it's had such an amazing run. What is that run? Uh, just round numbers. Let's just figure out what that is. Yeah, it's uh, 370, let's just say 400% round numbers at least. So for me to trade this, it would have to pull back fairly deeply. I want to see this, like that big fat knockout bar we just looked at. I'd like to see something like that, and then I might consider it. But yeah, this one's a little bit on the crazy side. You've got an average volume of 5 million on 30-day average, so that's pretty good. But again, yeah, deeper pullback. This should be in some of my momentum lists. Is there a way to do that again? Watch list is a member of biotechnology. Does it put my watch list in here? I don't see it. So unless I took it out, but this it seems familiar. But yeah, John, I'm with you on that one. Just use a deeper pullback. Good eye though, by the way. Okay, WWW has issues. Yeah, Wolverine. I've been looking at that one quite a bit. And some of the issues is, as you very smartly pointed out, we have overhead supply back here. So that's, that's I probably I know that's a long ways away, but I probably would pass on that. And it can be a little wide and loose at times. Uh, although it does look, it does look okay. And, and given the, the most of the conditions now, I would say that's probably a better looking stock. A lot, there's a lot of choppy stocks out there. But I think that if the S&P can hang around its old highs and NASDAQ can follow suit, then obviously we'll start getting some cleaner setups and better setups soon. But yeah, maybe I'm being too much of a purist here, but I would I would not take it just based on this overhead supply back here. But yeah, for the most for but in general, that's a, a good pick on that one, John. Everybody so far gets a high five uh, as far as conditions and everything. Yeah, um, Aflac is um, looking pretty good. Uh, HV is a little low, but sometimes when you have a nice persistent move, that HV comes off a little bit. So that's, I wouldn't get too excited about that. Now, when I kind of pick it apart, see if you back the chart way out, it looks pretty interesting, right? Just going to the moon. When you come in, though, you can see you got a little base here and you've pulled back to the base. So, Arthur, I would say this looks okay. Uh, I would personally pass just because we've come back to the base, but it, it it does look okay. You could certainly do a lot worse. And I have to say, tonight's some of the best picks that I've seen uh, in, in in many shows, and especially given the, the the conditions where everything's a little mixed out there for the most part. So these are good picks, by the way. But I'm not going after any of them at the moment. Okay, uh, any other questions? Any individual stocks? I'll give YouTube a few seconds to catch up and then I'll start wrapping up. Well, we're in pass. Obviously, I want to thank everybody for attending tonight. Uh, I, I love doing these shows because you guys show up. <laughs> and it's uh, it's it's uh, good for me. I learn a lot in the process, get a lot of ideas from a selfish standpoint. But thank you so much for being here. Anything unanswered, daviddavidlander.com. Most everybody here, I think, is in the Facebook group. So I'll see you guys tomorrow everybody else have a great weekend hopefully i'll see you again next week and may the trend be with you thank you so much You're welcome